hello, 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 my podcast people, and welcome back to another episode of my favorite podcast. Today we are coming at you with a guest episode, and believe it or not, I have a Cairo on the podcast. <laughs> you know, the, the battle goes back, and I don't even know why it's there, but it's like, ah, PTs versus Cairo. So I got a Cairo on the podcast today, and it's kind of like a double whammy because he is the founder and president of Smart Tools. If y'all remember my background, I was one of the lead, the lead instructors for Rock Tape. So it's kind of a direct competitor there. And things have changed, times have changed. And now I have the one and only Nick Colosi the second. Fancy. So actually I should say Dr. Nick Colosi the second. You could, yeah. Fancy guy on <laughs> from Smart Tools. I had reached out to him, not gonna lie. Actually, I've used this episode used this example in past episodes. I slid into his DMs and I was like, my guy, pitch incoming. Full transparency. You can tell me to fuck off if you want. It's totally fine. I got a busted knee. I would love to rep some BFR, uh, a bar, but BFR unit. If that's cool, would love it. If not, that's totally fine. And we had a conversation and I'm bringing him on today so we can talk about BFR, so we can talk about smart tools, so we can talk about the company, so we can talk about his background because y'all know it is always my goal to help you cut through the noise. You have questions about things. You have questions about products. I want to help you out. So I bring on the best, and that is what today is all about. So without further ado, welcome to the show, my new friend, Nick Colosi. Welcome. How you doing? What's going on? Really? Dr. Shante. Shante, I don't know. Which one? Whatever one you prefer. Call me doctor uh, now. Yeah. I haven't gone. Yeah. So I haven't gone by doctor in probably like five years. Right? I haven't practiced. I haven't touched a patient in like five years. No. Um, yeah. The joke is that. You know, my director of education, Ed, doesn't allow me to touch patients. <laughs> He's just like, just run the company and That's shut it. up. Do what you do best. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Love it. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So I, I did. Um, so I kind of, well, I'm based here in Cleveland, Ohio. Um, not exactly a hotbed of <laughs> medical technology, uh, believe it or not. I mean, we have the Cleveland Clinic, right? Yeah. But, um, but yeah, not, not exactly a startup haven. Um, however, it is very favorable to startups. Uh, it's affordable living. Uh, you got to deal with the winters, but it's affordable living, very cheap to get started space and everything's dirt cheap. Uh, so it's actually pretty ideal for startups, (laughs) (laughs) but, uh, but yeah, so I, uh, my background, I I went to locally, I went to college here locally at Baldwin Wallace. Um, that was my, that was where I did my undergrad. Um, I went into, uh, grad school. I went to Cairo school in Chicago at national university. Uh, graduated there in 2013, uh, practiced for about four years. Um, and, uh, and then I kind of just went full time with smart tools. You know, I started smart tools while I was still in chiropractic. That blows my mind, man. That's yeah, like... you know, it, it was towards the end and we we're kind of like, you know, I was doing ART, yeah. I was doing DNS, mm-hmm. I was doing, you know, PRI and all this stuff. And, um, and I'm like, I just need some tools and I don't want to yeah. spend $2,000 on like yep. some tools and like take a course. A zillion like, money. Bazillion dollars. I have no money. <laughs> And I'm just like, I know I can make something. My dad and my uncle have been in the steel business for like there it 30 is. years, you know, since like the seventies. So I'm there like, I think is. they can make, you know, I can make something. So, so yeah, that's kind of how it got started. You know, they, um, they, you know, we started making some tools, you know, these three piece set of tools, they weighed a ton, like they were a <laughs> solid uh-huh. stock of metal yeah. and they were incredibly thick. We had no like formal designs or anything. Um, and, um, I just, started selling to my like classmates for like a hundred bucks for like a three piece set. It was like just my cost basically. Yeah. And uh, yeah. And it was a kind of funny too. Cause I, I made like Love five this. grand, I think when I was in school selling these things, so, like cash. Damn. Um, yeah, I know. And I, <laughs> I didn't have anything like to put the money in. I'm like, okay, I put a backpack, but it didn't really fit. So like I had, like, under a the bed. Box. <laughs> yeah. I had like this standard process lunch box, you know, that they give to everybody. <laughs> And, uh, and I took it to the bank. I look such what? like a drug dealer. Nick. I swear to God. Yeah. What? And they're like, <laughs> I'm like, I swear to God, I'm not a drug dealer. They're like, we don't care. We don't care. I'm like, what kind of bank is this? <laughs> um, so like, uh, yeah. So I deposited like 5k and like cash wow. and I was just like, wow, that was bizarre. Wow. Uh, yeah. Nick. So that's how I kind of got started. Back it up for a second. Cause yeah. when I was reading, you know, your background and that you founded it during, uh, founder during school that really stood out to me where did the mm-hmm. i don't know i'll call it the confidence to start a business during yeah. school where did that come from yeah i think it's just a cairo thing okay because uh, kairos they kind of yeah. like you know you graduate you and then they like kick you out and they're like okay good luck you know you like 
sink or swim, right? Um, there's really, I mean, some go into associates, but most start their own mm-hmm. place. Yeah. Or if they're an associate, they're not an associate for very long by the numbers. Um, so there's kind of like an entrepreneurial spirit kind of ingrained. It really seems like that. That's one, yeah. you know, as a physical therapist, that's one thing that it always seemed like, but I couldn't tell because I am not a, not a Cairo. It just felt very different where PTs come out of school and they're like, go work in a mill. There's never even talk about opening your own <laughs> thing at all. They're like, you're going to be poor. And it felt like yeah. Cairo's come out and they're like, we're going to go make something. And exactly. I love this. So you make the tools 5k actually question for this. You smart tools has a very sleek, modern, it's like a sexy marketing, sexy look to it. Was that yeah. you? That was me. Yeah. I handle all the marketing, advertising. Yeah. Logo design. Yeah. That was all me. Okay. I have to own up to that one. I love this. You were just like, Hey, I want it to look like X. I got a vision for this. Like to be honest, hyper ice was the big inspiration. Yeah. For smart. Me. Yeah, so smart. To be honest. You so know, um, smart. Our colors are similar kind of, and you know, they're sleek. So and, exactly. Um, I actually, we actually used the same PR company a few years ago to launch the 3.0. Dude, so, smart. um, if it ain't yeah, broke, so yeah. Hey, yeah. Right. I don't have like, the hundreds of millions of dollars in sales that they got, but, uh, <laughs> so, so uh, smart. yeah. So, and, you know, and we, when we came onto the market, you know, with the ISTM tools in 2014, um, Facebook advertising just was starting to get going. And honestly, I owe a lot to the growth of the company because wow. I had nothing, you know, we didn't have, we, we bootstrapped. Yeah. Our advertising budget was a joke. Like wow. it was, a joke. uh, yeah, you're, you're talking a few hundred bucks a month here. Um, wow. And it, that's how we started. And it, 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 back then it was like a couple cents, a click yeah. for a link. It's a different, you know, a different time. Yeah. It was crazy. A different time. And they were just getting the pixels started mm-hmm. up and, and all that stuff. So it's kind of like the birth of that. And we just came out at a good time and, you know, and we were able to grow very organically on a bootstrap budget um, and not take out any loans or anything. That's incredible. Um, and basically just be self-sufficient and just work off a of profit. I mean, I didn't take any, you know, I didn't totally. take any money from yeah. the company for, for quite a few years. You know, we were just, you know, just reinvesting. That's how everything. it starts. Absolutely. Yeah. That's how it starts. Right. Absolutely. And that was in 20, so that was in 2014. Um, so then we rolled with ISTM for about three years or so with, you know, I brought on, uh, Ella Cara for director of education, and then we kind of got an education going it was rock and roll for about a year or so. And then, you know, ISTM kind of hit a wall. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, a yeah. lot of knockoffs came out, yeah. right. A lot of knockoffs in China, you can go on Amazon. It's good, you know, it so was just, cheap. Yeah. It was totally. tough, right. It was, it was a tough time. And, um, around 2017 ish and, you know, and I'll be, I'll be completely honest about that. You know, it's just yes. with every business you, you you're going to have, you're going to have ebbs and flows. You're never going to be like this, right? Mm-hmm. It is. <laughs> if only. Much like if that, only. you know? So, um, yeah. So then we, uh, we got into BFR in 2018. Um, you know, Ed brought it to my attention. He's like, Hey, you know, my buddy down at, um, at, uh, FC Dallas, he's been getting some crazy results with his MLS team. Um, and they're doing this thing called BFR. He's like, I never heard of it. Um, and I'm like, I've never heard of it. I have exercise phys background. I've never heard of it. Yeah. Um, and it was just kind of just coming on a little bit mm-hmm. and, and be becoming more affordable, you know, at the time, you know, really the thing, only thing out yep. there was like $6,000 unit, huge units, huge yes. thing. You know, you got to put on the IV pole, Whole thing. you know, it's like, okay, we're not in the ER, Whole thing. you know, we're, it, it's just ridiculous. Um, big problem, you know, obviously not attainable yeah. for most people and our, our stick basically as a company was we want to be able to be, uh, be affordable to all clinicians, but also all patients, Love that. right? Cause a lot of times these patients want to buy yeah. the products that are being used in the clinic. Um, I and you that. know, like patients can't always make it to the clinic. That, right? I mean, that's, that that's, we have to accept yeah. that uh, at some point I had heard, uh, when I was in PT school, there was a, a, a fellow student, um, she was second career. She was a massage therapist first and she was second career. And she called mm-hmm. physical therapists she, or rather she said physical therapists have always been known in the massage therapy world as the keeper of the tools. And I was like, that's so true. And I love this kind of like democratization of tools and helping people. It also makes your job easier. Like I know neither of us have treated in a minute, but like I want mm-hmm. people to be taking care of themselves and having access to these things 
at home and having the education to be able to do these things. And then they can come out to see him as much, like they get better, better outcomes. So I love that that was, you know, front and center, top of mind for, totally. for the company. And, I absolutely and love that. That was before COVID and the telehealth yeah. revolution, right? So now it's even more so we're just like, hey, a lot of, you know, some, some of these PTs are having a shift, right? I mean, we're seeing a lot of yes. being done at home yes. um, with telehealth and, yes. and things like that. So they're going to need these rehab products for home use. And we're already, you know, we're already talking with some large, I mean, we, we work with large PT clinic mm -hmm. networks, large, they have awesome. thousands yeah. plus yeah, yeah, network yeah, yeah. and they have telehealth, um, you know, built into their, into their model. And um, we're, we want to be seamless into that model. And um, we're, we're going to be piloting a few markets and see how things work out there because we feel it could be very, very powerful rehab tool. This. Um, if we can do this at home three, four days. Nick, before. it is. So you folks listening, this is 100% why I brought Nick on. So if you follow me on the socials, or you're listening to the podcast, you know that last October I hurt my knee. I've always had not such great knees, uh, but hurt my knee last October playing volleyball and then was doing rehab because that's what I do. Uh, and one of the issues is load tolerance has always been an issue for me. My whole life definitely been an issue. And so BFR, and we'll get into kind of the science and stuff behind it, but BFR is a phenomenal solution to this because it's like suddenly, hey, we can help with, help uh, stave off atrophy. We can help with you actually getting stronger growing your shit, getting some hypertrophy in there without significant load. And I was like, sign me up. So I've actually been using it now. Um, so now the time of recording this, it's May. Uh, and I've been, I use it now about three days a week. Um, and I've been using it as part of my warm up. Um, it's a great way to get a great muscle pump, right? We get some blood flow in the area. We get it staying in that area, which if any of you are kind of in the bodybuilding space, two things, one, we know that BFR came from bodybuilders that were just doing occlusion training and just wrapping a band real tight around their, around their yeah. limbs. Uh, Very but it's a phenomenal way. If you're looking to, if you do have any kind of joint issues or anything like that, to get a muscle pump first, do some of your, you know, you can do open chain, closed chain, whatever. And then I can go on to some of the other lifts, but I can do a full lift, a full workout without exposing myself to a ton of load. So if you have load precautions, if you have load limitations, whether it's post-op or you just kind of got a janky knee like me, this is an incredible, incredible solution. So why don't I pass it over to you, Nick? Do you want to sure. get nerdy with us? And and for those yeah. people who aren't familiar with get... BFR? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I, uh, I, I, Ed's more on the science yeah, side, I'm more it. on the tech side, yeah. like development of the product and kind of just, okay, what's the customer's needs, right? And trying to fulfill those as best as I can within the structure that we have. So um, yeah, it's kind of like, you know, BFR, everybody hears about it, blood flow restriction training. What is it? What can it do for me? It, you know, why do I need it? Um, so blood flow restriction training, um, it started back in the 60s and 70s. Uh, it's debatable whether it started in Japan whether, you know, Arnold really popular, mm -hmm. you know, just throwing on a strap <laughs> and just chasing the pump, so to speak, right? They're just looking to get a pump as best as possible. Um, and uh, so, yeah, th th that's it. that's how I kind of all started. Um, and then around 2012, 2014-ish, it kind of got into the military a little bit um, with more modified, um, operating room type of tourniquets. Mm. Um, and then that kind of, kind of jump started things a little bit from an education point of view. Um, and then more affordable products started to come on the market around 2016, 2017. And then we came out of the market in 2018 when we felt that there was a need. Um, but yeah, it's basically a modified blood pressure cuff or yes. a tourniquet rather. Yes. And, uh, the higher end ones like ours, they, f they find the limb occlusion pressure or, or LOP. And that's basically you're personalizing the, B uh, the, the blood, um, uh, the blood restriction to that muscle on a, on a person by person basis. Cause everybody's going to have a different yeah. occlusion pressure. They're like, so for my arm, it's 180, but you know, for, you know, my fiance, it might be 150 mm -hmm. or 120. Um, so this, this adds to the safety profile because that. you know exactly how much you're occluding and it's quantifiable, especially in a patient setting that you can scale them up or down depending on, you know, that. how they're progressing to their rehab. So it's a very, very powerful tool. And it's very objective. Right. So we, we feel the way we're doing it should be and is the gold standard for the clinic, as opposed to putting on a cuff, pumping it up with a hand right. pump to an arbitrary pressure yes. and saying, like, 
do you feel like you're a seven out of 10? <laughs> exactly. Well, that's highly, highly subjective. Like you get some meatheads who are like, yeah, yeah, yeah I'm fine. And then they're fully occluded and they're like rocking and rolling and then they, they pop a vein, you know? Um, or you get some daffodils that are like, yeah, I'm a seven out of 10. And you're like, I haven't yeah. pumped it up. I'm like, it's not on. Doors. It's actually not you know, on. Like, exactly. I didn't pump it yet. Right. I didn't pump it yet. I didn't put the cuff on. I didn't pump it. Or, like when you get a shot, you're like that. I'm like, ah, oh, it's that's just the alcohol one. Exactly. Uh, you know, so yeah, it, that's so we uh, that that's what we've been doing. You know, that's and we we built education around it because it's not taught in schools that. really. At least it's starting to, but at the time, it really was nowhere to be found. That that part there. Yeah. Questions. Yeah. I I got a few questions. Um, yeah. Just because you had just said, and I know we'll get, we'll circle back again, folks, but I know that PTs listening to this, the first thing is safety. They're, every, every PT thinks they're going to get sued for some shit, even though totally. our you know malpractice insurance is $1 because we don't get sued for shit. But yeah. with this, um, can you dive into two parts here? I'm going to be a bad host and ask two questions. First one sure. is, were you nervous about the safety side of things and like anything around that? Um, and then two, what is in place? And you can just repeat because you kind of said it before. What's in place mm -hmm. to, you know, help mitigate these safety concerns that yeah. providers have? Uh, to answer your question, yes. Uh, safety concerns with any new product or any product period that is leaving the warehouse, there's always a safety concern. If I sold dumbbells, I'm like, oh, my yes. God, someone's been dropping drop their head. Exactly. <laughs> you know, like there's always going to be a concern there. Um, but after actually looking at the research, we're just like, man, this is a highly, yes. highly safe yes. modality. There's been so little risk. Um, if they're properly screened, of course, and we stress proper screening, like don't just go and buy it without getting clearance from a medical professional physician, somebody, you know, that is a medical professional, get clearance from them, get a physical, make sure you're healthy enough to do this. And a general rule of thumb is if you're healthy enough to do resistance training, you're healthy okay. enough to do BFR. Okay. Um, now, if you're post-op surgical, a little bit different, you're going to have some different, you might be overall healthy, yes, but you, you, <laughs> you got a swelled knee from an ACL uh, repair, right? So like there's certain protocols to follow as far as, you know, when's the swelling going to get down? That's when you can start BFR, you know, the, 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 the um, the uh, the incision has to heal to a certain extent to really start BFR. You can't just jump right into it, right? Not like so, th there's certain things you need to follow, and we you know we teach that in our courses. We try to educate that as much as possible to our Love customers. Um, we don't really sell to anybody under 18. Okay, uh, you know, true story. I had a, a 16 year old influencer with a quite a bit of following uh, wanting to rep the product. I'm like, I can't. Two more years. Like, I can't two more years, man. I can't like, I get it. You have, you know, a lot of followers. Congratulations. It's awesome. You know, it's a lot of work. I get it. But I'm like, I can 16. in good conscience have, have you rep product when I'm, I, I don't sell to your yeah. age group. You're repping it. And, and we're a medical based product. I mean, that's, that's what we do. You know, we're, we're in over 5,000 clinics right now, plus wow. uh, high end fitness facilities and things like that. Like Equinox and Exos. Exos is a great partner of ours oh. and, and Cleveland Clinic and Mayo, like all these places. I'm like, I just can't be a voice piece for the, for the product. Um, totally. So, yeah. Um, so yeah, so that's, um, you know, in 2018, um, we, we, we came onto the market, um, with, with, with that. Um, and it was basically a hand pump and a hand, and a handheld Doppler to find the LOP. Fair. Okay. That's okay. What, that's what it was. Um, uh, what did it work? Yes. Cause that's kind of the gold standard yeah. really. Uh, the handheld Doppler, yeah. um, is it fees? Is it uh, economical? I was no. like is it optimal. <laughs> no, to this day, I can barely find it in my leg to this day. <laughs> So like, and, and I, and I created the damn thing. Like, and I, I, can, I can't find my LOP in my leg. So like, it's not easy. Yeah. Uh, and you needed two people. You couldn't do it on yourself. Got right. It. So There's like, limitations. After, yeah, exactly. So then, um, and then we came out, we started developing gen three in 2019. Um, and we came out with it, uh, at CES in January of 2020. <laughs> oh, what a Started taking Crap timing, right? Wow. And, okay. Yeah. And and, that, and add insult to injury are the pressure sensors that we use are the same ones that are used in ventilators. Oh my god! So it was just like just double wow. whammy. Like no more product. There's no, yeah. Then there was no pressure sensor. <laughs> no so we're like, it, it was it was a crazy, crazy, crazy time. You know, we started taking pre-orders in January. We didn't ship the first product until October of 2020. 
I mean, people so, got to understand. They, I'm sure they're upset, uh, but at like first they didn't. No. <laughs> at, at first they were pissed, yeah. uh, but uh, and I totally get it too. Like I, I'm like I would be pissed yeah. too, but then as time wore on, they're like, oh like, wow, oh, this COVID serious. thing, yeah, it's really. Real. It's real. It's affecting the economy in a big way, our supply chain in a big way. So over time, they were kind of understanding. Wow. Um, wow. And then, you know, we, yeah, so we, we started shipping in October um, of 2020. We had some issues with it. And then we started shipping. Um, we kind of we had to go back to the drawing board, fix some things. And then then April 2021 was our real kind of, um, you know, watershed moment for us is when we're like, yeah, this product is just rock solid. This thing we're shipping out. Um, and then it was kind of off to the races, uh, uh, from then on, it was, it was, you know, we learned a lot through the process. It's probably good that we went through everything that we did. Mm -hmm. No, totally. You you learn way more from your mistakes. Absolutely. and you would, and I don't want to say from school, but you know, you don't say, you, <laughs> but you also learn yes. a lot, from the mistake. <laughs> but also yes, in uh, the trenches. Yes, also, exactly. Yes, like. Yeah. So I learned a lot to know what to look for in engineers, staff, you know, that's a big part. You have a good team around you. You can get a lot done. But I love this. I love this. One of the reasons I love bringing on the founders, bringing on the owners, the presidents of companies, because you're in it. And we could hear about the actual like company side of it, the business side of things with that, mm-hmm. Nick, one of the things that you kind of threw in there and I want to dive into in terms sure. of mitigating the concern and addressing the safety the safety issues yeah. is education. Right? Yes. Smart tools has an, an education arm, an educational educational arm to the business and that comes mm-hmm. um, that you, you can take courses. Can you tell us some more about that? Yeah. Yeah. So our clinical courses, uh, they're clinical based, right? So it's not like, you know, uh, anybody can just go and take it. I mean, they can technically, but I mean, they're going to be bored yeah, of their mind. Yeah. It's, it's a lot of science, a lot of clinical cases, but we have live courses. We have online on demand courses, so they can just awesome. purchase, purchase it awesome. and just take it and stop it, start it whenever they want. It's five hours. Uh, we do virtual courses as well. We're going to start ramping that up. Believe probably next month. Makes sense. Uh, Ethan cries. There he is, my guy. Yeah, Ethan, your guy. Ethan's teaching that one. Um, uh, so yeah, so the virtual is going to be starting up. Um, and then we got level two starting up. Um, I did not write any of this material. That, yeah, of course. <laughs> uh, that's all. Uh, the yeah. uh, he's my director of education. He he developed all the material, um, you know, for us, and um, so he's been very integrative in, in in the education and developing the education, digging through all the science and digging through all the studies. Uh, there is so much out there. That's um, awesome. You know, and we're, we're doing courses with, um, you know, big hospital systems we do, and then small clinics, you know, we, we, we do the gambit military, you know, we do a ton with the military actually. Ah. Um, yeah, we, we do a quite a bit with the military. That's um, awesome. It just makes sense yeah. though. I feel like, you know, rock tape, we're trying to get in with them as well. They're just, there's red tape and things like that, but then they're also more willing to do things just, you know, thinking mm-hmm. you folks listening, I brought Danny Matei on a bunch and, uh, his background is military and just like, they had direct access like for always. So a big difference between the model there and like what you can do and how things are implemented. So that makes total sense that mm-hmm. you're in that side of things. It's very cool. Very, very, very cool. I like that. So <laughs> yeah. with the with the courses, did you find that you did started doing a lot more did COVID expedite the online side of things? COVID expedited the online things. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We were we were doing probably close to 75 to 80 courses a year. Oh, still good though. Between yeah. 2018 and 2019, we did about 150 courses, yeah, globally. Wow. Um, and then 2020 hit and just like slammed the brakes. And then the consumer model kind of changed. Like they they just did not like used to be back in the day, two day courses yep. were kind of standard, right? Yeah. And then it was one day. Now it's like Yep. Maybe half day. Yep. Isn't <laughs> that rest wild? Online. Yeah. It's like their behavior is just complete. And it's fine. It's whatever. It's a, you got to roll with it. Right? Totally. Right. It I is mean, totally, totally yeah. different. I saw that, you know, that's I 2020 was when I was winding down. I was like, had made a decision. That was probably gonna be my last year with rock tape and COVID was like, mm-hmm. here you go. And just watching the consumer behavior, like you said, going from we're going to be, we love in, we love in person. We want two days, two eight hour courses, two eight hour days, yeah. like it's all so long. And then right. being like, okay, it's on zoom for half the day. Maybe and that might be too long. Like that it's, it's so, yeah. so yeah. true. Who do you it, find it is. is primarily yeah. using, uh, we'll say consuming the courses now. Um, yeah, I would say probably 80 to 85% PT, PTA. Love it. Yeah, 
majority. Um, and then the remaining athletic trainers. Where are the Kairos? What What are your people doing, Nick? You know what? It's happening. They, they don't do a lot of post op. So a lot of these, a lot of the BFR is being used post op. Makes sense. So they don't see a lot Perfect of post op. Yeah, like, yeah, Kairos are more seeing yeah. the chronic stuff. Totally. Right? So they're, and a lot of times, I'm, I mean, again, I'm, I'm painting a broad paintbrush, yeah, right? Absolutely. There's, but most of the time, they're coming to the Kairos if they're a last resort. Mm -hmm. If they're, you know, like, hey, nothing has worked, I'm going to try Kairos. Yeah. Um, maybe I was just a shitty Cairo and that's what I saw, but I don't know. <laughs> uh, but by and large, that's what I saw. I like I saw it. golfers yeah. and then I, I was right next to a country club and I <laughs> saw like, I tried everything. Let's see what you got. Totally. Yeah. You know, like that's pretty much, that's pretty totally. much what I got. Um, but, uh, Makes but sense. yeah, Makes sense. so we primarily see that and, and like, and going back to the safety thing, that is like the number one thing. They're just like, what? This can't be safe. You're restricting blood flow and oxygen to a muscle. Can't be safe. And I'm like, you're only doing it for a very yeah. short amount of time. We're not if living this like is, this. Yeah, they think it's like all day. I'm like, <laughs> go home I'm like, now. What? <laughs> it's like five minutes, and you want the thing off. It's yes. not a fair. And you can t yes. attest to this. It's not oh. a therapeutic spa like no. experience. It's, unpleasant. And it's not meant it's unpleasant and it's not meant to be therapeutic no, it's not no you know it's not a it's not, it's not a massage which i is why i'm like of course the pts jumped on it because they're like we the, as a pt we sell the worst things right we're like you have to work we have to actually do stuff it's going to take a long yeah. time oh here's this unpleasant modality give it to me let me <laughs> let me help my people with this thing it's you know there's a lot of skeptics too yeah, and then you show them the research you're like that, wow, there's so much research there's a ton of research that it's highly effective and very this. safe. And I can get my patients loading way this. earlier than this. I normally would ever get them loading. They can get them in, get them out. I mean, it, it's a no unless brainer. you're a mill, like, you don't want to get them in and get them out. But like it gets them in loaded earlier this. and they can do it at home. They can, it, it just no gets them better faster. And it's just, isn't it's that a no brainer? Cool? If you are listening to this episode and you are one of the Kairos that does see people that are like, I've tried everything, last ditch effort. This is mm -hmm. actually a, it's a perfect tool for that. Because if you yes. have someone coming in chronic pain, deconditioned, doesn't want to do things, is scared of lifting things. This is actually the solution, right? So if we get nerdy for a hot second, folks, what we're looking at here is that we're going to lean on like the metabolite or metabolic pathway to help induce these hypertrophy changes, as opposed to leaning on the pure mechanical tension model, where you have to have high load or you're having a longer time under tension. And that's uncomfortable, difficult for people. They can just be, have their ideas about it. They're scared about it. They, they just can't tolerate it, right? Maybe they don't have the tissue tolerance for that. We have other options, right? There is science behind this. So one, if you can take a course and go learn about it. Uh, two, definitely try it out yourself. But three, if you are, if that's the demographic that you're seeing, I my whole goal, my whole stick with everything is to help people live their best life. One, as the provider, you can get better results, faster results, easier results with this. On the flip side, if you are the consumer, you're the patient, you can get better results, faster results, easier results with this. Yes, there is some initial discomfort and things like that, but this is a viable solution for that demographic as well. You don't have to be some superstar athlete. You don't have to be some, you know, post-op patient. This can be across, this is applicable across the board. And there's just so many instances um, and, and smart tools has made it. It's so easy to use folks. If you just push like one button, push it a few times. You take the individualized, it gets the individualized pressures, which, which is what Nick had said. And I loved that. Yeah. Um, everything's digital readout and um, it's individual for you. Oh, was that? The new one's even easier. <laughs> I was just, so I got my questions over here on the side. And I was going to yeah. say, can you talk about the different models that you got? Yeah. Yeah. So we, we so we had the 3.0 in 2020 and then we kind of, you know, went through that. And that was like our first foray into electronics, which was a learning experience. Um, and so that we sold the last of the 3.0 in January. So I think we sold our last pro model in November. And then we sold our last consumer model in January. Um, and we started pre-orders of the 4.0 that we've been working on for the eh, better part of two years. Wow. We were working on this. So it, it's, yeah, we, we started filing for patents about a year and a half okay. two years ago. Uh, so we, 
we really started this a while ago and trying to get this down, you know, and um, the biggest thing is LOP, you know, going back to the LOP and limb inclusion pressure and personalizing the BFR experience per, per body, part, you know, it's yes. not just per person, it's per yes. limb. Cause that could be different. Yes, 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 um, yes. Yeah. That a lot of people think it's like, oh, okay. My arm. No, mm -hmm. like it could be 180 here and like yes. 140 here, especially if you have atrophy. <laughs> that part. You, you, that yeah, part. exactly. Yep. So we really want to, uh, you know, and not to mention if we're saying we're doing LOP, it's better be accurate. <laughs> so we actually did a validation study with Mayo, uh, last May, we got published by Mayo. Uh, they did a validation study on our algorithms and it was accurate. I love so, it. Um, we're only one of two to do that. Us and Owens, um, or Delphi unit rather, uh, that, um, that's, uh, validated for accuracy. So that was very important for us um, because yeah, you know, cause you, there's a lot of companies out there. They'll say one this thing part. and just, and it just doesn't, it doesn't show, yeah. you know, it, it, it doesn't, it's not accurate. So we really, we really go the extra mile, you know, we're listed with the FDA, we're validated for our accuracy. You know, we really go the extra mile to make this as safe and effective as possible. And we get feedback from customers. That's the biggest thing. That's like, cause some customers are afraid to give us feedback. I'm like, bring it on. Like, I need to know yeah. what you want so I can make it, That's you know, it. and we can, we can make the product better. We can update the app. We can update the firmware. We can do whatever we want. Like, just let me know what you need. That's um, it. I'm not in the trenches, yeah. right? I'm not. You know, so, yeah. So the 3.0, um, we, like I said, we discontinued that in, in January. And then we came out the 4.0. We just started shipping this yesterday. Damn. <laughs> yeah. Congrats. Well, yeah. I, yeah. So uh, yesterday was busy overseeing everything. We got two trucks worth of um, cases. Just to put the cases. We were waiting on the damn cases um, to, to ship it's these in. something. So, damn. I know two big trucks worth, uh, came in yesterday, uh, like full size trucks, <laughs> uh, uh, for cases to ship these. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So now we, yeah, now we got like a backlog of, it's like a thousand some orders that we have. Back it's a good on. problem. To it's a problem. Champagne problems. Like it's, it's problem, champagne like. problem, right? Yeah. It, we, we, we got to Yeah. So now it's like, okay, now the real work starts. We, we really got to get yeah. these out to customers and cause they're, they're, it's not, it's not like it's, um, it's not like a device that's like, okay, I'll get, it. it's not like a water bottle, you know, mm -hmm. like a large yeah. or something. It's like, okay, I'll get it when I get it. Like these people are like, Hey, I'm, I'm, I'm in the middle yes, of rehab. Exactly. That and, part. That and part. This is the golden time. Yeah. And that's a lot of our customers. And it's like, this is our golden time that we need, um, for our rehab. Uh, you know, if I wait any longer, you know, the totally. window is packed, yeah. you know? So, so we really are like, okay, yeah, I know we understand. I'm really trying to get these out. The 4.0 is a massive leap. Um, it is fully controlled by the app on, so we're on iOS and Google play. Um, it's fully controlled. Um, you can do a lot with this. It's so much more advanced than the 3.0. You can do intermittent BFR, which we feel is going to be huge okay. going forward. Tell me more. Um, Nick. Yeah. So we have three different modes on here. So there's continuous BFR, mm -hmm. which is what we pretty much do with the 3.0, yep. right? So we it's inflate on. it. And it, yeah, it's on the air. It just stays in there. You exercise, you go about your business. The air doesn't, you don't deflate it in between sets or whatever, mm -hmm. reps or whatever. So that's continuous BFR. Um, and then there's uh, what's called a resting BFR, which is you inflate it during your rest period. And then you deflate it during your exercise period. Huh. That is a nice way to ease totally. a patient into BFR. That's like, okay, yes. they don't work out as it is let alone throwing on a strap, mm -hmm. inflating yes. it, like, restricting their arterial. Yeah. Restricting their arterial flow. <laughs> and they're going to exercise. It's just like, that's a it's lot a for them to, yeah. It's just, and then, and then if you, if they don't like it, you lose them. Totally. No buy-in done. Don't use it again. There's no buy-in. Yep. You overcooked that steak. Yeah. Done. Can't put it back on the grill. So we, uh, resting BFR is a good way to integrate it. Um, and then there was called intermittent BFR, which is kind of like a nice in-between where you're inflating it during your exercise period and then you're deflating it during the rest period. Awesome. Um, so that increases the safety profile because mm -hmm. you're not under, yeah. uh, and, and there's really no difference between that and continuous so far in the research that has shown that there's no massive difference. Yeah. Um, so that, I like that, that's really good because it, it increased, I use it. I, I prefer intermittent BFR okay. personally. Yeah. I mean, and I can understand why. Yeah. And, and you know what? I couldn't really do it before because I was rehabbing a rotator cuff issue. Got it. And I've been, I was doing a lot of BFR, um, you know, with that. And I was finding myself just using intermittent all the time. And I was able to do that with the 4.0 because 
you have two cuffs at the same time and you yeah. can control both cuffs with the app at the same time. So you can inflate it and deflate it at the same time. Got it. Um, yeah. So obviously you don't do the LLP at the same yeah, time, yeah. but once you find the pressures, mm-hmm, you're, you're good. good to go. And yeah. Yeah. And it, it's really fast. I mean, this, this finds LLP in the arm in about 15 seconds. Wow. That's how fast it is. We, we, uh, wow. yeah, we're able to, to up, we update hey, our fancy, LLP man. algorithms. Yeah, we did a really, a really happy the way it came out. That's awesome. Um, yeah, that's yeah. So, amazing. so back, yeah, functionally, yeah, you can use both cuffs at the same time for intermittent BFR, and um, you can. And it, it's like I said, 20, 30 seconds, probably inflate it depending on the size of the cuff. Um, it's much more time efficient. Amazing. What are the um, I don't know package options that you have for this? Like, is it arms and legs? Just legs? Just arms? How? Is, what do you got? Yeah. Common question. Great question. Common question. Um, we, we don't have set cuff sizes for the limbs because everybody's different, mm-hmm. but we do have four different sizes and then they just measure their limb and then they match it to the size and chart. So we have small, medium, and then we have large and XL. Uh, the small and medium are really for the arms. Okay. And then the, the large and XL are really for the legs. Got it. Um, and, and, and a lot of people think they can get by with one size. For I'm both like, body parts? For both upper and lower, yeah, I'm like that's impossible. How? The only way that's possible, <laughs> the only way is if like you were a bodybuilder and then like you just got massive, atrophy yeah, you got some issues, like leg or something. Like that's the only like, way what? that's remotely possible. There's no way. What? Yeah, <laughs> I, I, hey, some of these questions, yeah, uh, <laughs> no, um, but yeah, no, I, yeah, they, um, that's, um, yeah, that's a common question. Oh. So you tell them, you know, make sure you measure your limb. Um, Sample. Between the deltoid and bicep, and then highest up on the hip, uh, on the leg, right? Um, that that's those are the only two spots you put the cuff. Uh, I see some people trying to put the cuff on the calf. I've seen that before. No, no. Um, I'm no. like, it's the same plumbing. No, so exactly. If you, if you, what are we doing? It's all it's all the same plumbing. If doing? anything, you're putting you at risk for more nerves. Exactly. Nerves are, nerves exactly. You're gonna have drops. Yeah. Of it. What are you doing? Exactly. Yeah. Or worse. Right. Don't yeah. I know. Like, <laughs> I didn't tell you to do that. <laughs> so yeah, we, um, yeah. So it, it, yeah, same spot. Um, yeah, it's amazing. I mean, as far as safety, yeah, I mean, it, it's, it's, uh, yeah, it's incredible. Some of the results and some of the, 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 um, uh, the reviews we get from customers, they'll just email me out of the blue and be like, thank you so much. You know, this product has been great for my rehab. Um, whether they're police officers, officers, you know, I get, I get them all. I get the gamut. Um, this um, makes total sense. It's a phenomenal, phenomenal product. Can you talk to me a little bit about the app? Is there, yeah. What, yeah. What's the app like? Um, so the app it's like I said, it's on, um, Google play and iOS and it's, uh, it just, everything that we do, we're, I love, I love how Apple operates. It's very intuitive. Yes. It's very, yes. everything is just, you don't have to think about it, you Simple. know? Um, so that's what we really want to do with the app was, just walk the person along. So we designed this for a non-clinician to Love operate. It. So it's so simple because some people think that they need to take a course in order to use it or operate it. I'm like, no, our courses are so you, to know how to program yes. it properly. Mm-hmm. But like the product, uh, no. totally. No, it's it's very because there's uh, there's products out there that are so complicated that you they spend like four hours no, of their course no. just knowing the product. I'm like, that's insane. No. Um, the product should not be that I'm difficult really, no. to do. That's a big barrier. Yes. No, that's what people barrier. are going to actually use it wrong. That's the problem. Uh, yes. Uh, so we do have safety mechanisms built in. Um, there's timers on there. So if we see an activity for a certain period of time, it shuts off. Okay. There's emergency release buttons, both on the app Love and the physical device. Um, uh, there's two different routes to go. So when you log into the app and download it for the first time, it will ask you, are you a clinician or are you a like non-health professional basically, or, or an individual rather? Uh, if you're an individual, you have to find LOP on each limb before you can manually select a pressure. So wow. it, it knows what your LOP is and it knows that it, you will never be able to exercise at full occlusion, uh, which is not safe. Um, it, you can only exercise at a certain percentage of that. Perfect. Perfect. Clinical side, totally different story. You have to sign a waiver or check off okay. on a waiver and, and, and make sure. Yeah. So okay. it's, yeah. I like so it. It's, it's, yeah. Are there, um, I, w- I don't, I'm just gonna call it workouts. Are there workouts or kind of pro- protocols? I guess that's the word I'm going to use inside of the app. Okay. 
since there is this intermittent? Uh, not uh, yet. Like that? Not yet. Yeah, we have a section in there. It's called Smart Cuffs Academy. It's just not built out yet. Love so it. it's there. We just need to add it. We figured let's get the product out there because everybody wants it. Yeah, <laughs> totally. And then then we'll add that in. Yeah. Um, like we're gonna add a couple more modes in. We're gonna add a rep counter in. Love a it. Counter. And then um, almost like a basically a metronome, basically. Um, and then uh, a Smart Cuffs Academy um, videos, sample okay. exercises, and things like that. Um, but yeah, a lot of people wow, think that the there's technology. like special. Yeah, there's they, a lot of people think there's special exercises too for BFR. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, mm -hmm. the beauty of BFR is you can integrate it to anything this. that you're already doing. This. It, there's, there's, there's no special this. exercise for it. This. Right? I yeah. really, you folks listening, if you've been thinking about it, you've been wondering about it, this is why I'm doing this episode so that you have uh, a, a, a gateway into this and you can go and learn about this because it is one of the things that, that Nick said earlier on was the original units, I don't know if you folks remember, literally were on like the hospital poles and it was, it was a, a behemoth of a, of a product. And in terms of what you could do, you were limited because it was attached to these big ass poles and you had ho like hoses going everywhere mm -hmm. with what, with the tool, the cuffs that smart tools has come out with. You don't have it literally have cut the wire. You don't have any of that. They've cut the cord. They've cut the hoses. And so you can go and just be um, on the stationary bike or on the assault bike while you have these on. You have a lot more freedom in terms of how you use it within your your exercise regime, your your rehab protocols. And I love that. Absolutely love that. Mm -hmm. um, within the courses, can you actually just break down? I'm correct on another time. I only have like a few more questions. Within sure. the courses, can you break down us? Can you break down the courses just a little bit in terms of what the structure looks like? Yeah. The, so the courses um, right now are kind of like a transitioning period because we have the old product totally. and new, yeah. and so there's different modes with the new. So we we have to integrate that into and, and update them too. There's new research coming out all the time, all so right. we, we're constantly trying to update the the, the literature. Um, but yeah, we don't really, we go into the science, yes, but it is not a course where we're like, okay, here's citation mm -hmm. X, Y, and Z. <laughs> and then we're reading research for yeah. like five hours yeah. because people like start to really nod mm -hmm. off. That ain't like, the way, Nick. I mean, you know what I'm talking about, right? Of course, it's, it's, yeah. So we, the first hour or two probably is, is, is more science and theory. Mm -hmm. and is to, so they just have a basis of Total, what's absolutely. kind of going on with BFR. So they just have a general idea. Um, then after that, it's a lot of lab and it's a lot of clinical cases. Um, Amazing. They, that the cases are probably the best yeah. ones because they're like, okay, I see, you know, post-op ACL or, 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 or rotator cuff, yep. common stuff. And we, we, we are like, okay, we have patient X, he's, you know, 22 year old sprinter, you know, towards a, you know, hamstring or towards ACL, whatever. And then we go over like, okay, we did this week one, week two, week three, week Love four. It. And we break it out into weeks and we're like, okay, we did this much, this much pressure, uh, this many reps, this many sets, you know, at, you know, at what percentage one rep max could it be 20, could it be 30. One rep max is tough to do when they're injured. So yeah, you know, exactly. It's like, yeah. you know, like you're not going to do one rep max if you just tore your bicep, you exactly. know, like it's not possible. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, it, you kind of do a guess. Cool. But yeah, it, it's very structured. Um, a lot of lab, a lot of lab, a lot That's of people it. think, yeah. So we tell them, Hey guys, you guys got to come in gym attire. Are people yeah. super sore the next day, Nick? Um, yeah, <laughs> yeah, they can be. I'm especially like, thinking about like, Cause they're doing higher. Yeah, reps, exactly. Right? You have to learn the thing. Like, <laughs> yeah, you got to get it to basically a volitional failure. Yeah. And we, you know, 30, the rep set scheme of 30, 15, 15, and 15 usually gets you there. Mm -hmm. uh, especially if you're at at least 50% LOP. You'll yes. get there. You yes. really just want it off yes. uh, by then. Yes. Um, yeah. So there are some soreness. Yeah. I, I mean, honestly, everyone listening to this, you and I both, like, as move people are, you know, very movement heavy and movement centric. And it's actually a great thing, I, I would think, that you go to a course and then you feel that. So, one, you can feel what your patients or clients might feel, but also you get buy in because you're like, I feel it. It does work. I am sore the next day. Like, yeah, something mm -hmm. happened. Not saying that you have to have soreness for things to happen, but you do get that, that I can see that helping with getting the buy in there. Um, so that makes sense. You folks listening, if you are looking for courses, we will link, um, we will link to show, uh, the website in the show notes and everything like that. Um, 
I got to shout out my guy, Ethan Christworth. He's been on the podcast. He's like a really good friend of mine. He's teaching for Smart Tools. Um, so if you're looking for courses, especially if you're in the, uh, he's doing virtual, correct? He's doing virtual and he's doing a lot of West Coast yeah. and Mountain West courses. So if you are in that geographical region, that's my boy. Those are the courses to take. It is a no brainer. Just absolutely. Nick, we went over your background. We went over the history of smart tools. We went over the push into BFR. BFR. We, of course, mm -hmm. covered the safety because I already know the khaki brigade. Like, well, what are the studies? What's going on? We went over that. We talked about the classes, um, the primary user safety, things like that, different models, um, mm -hmm. everything shipping now. Two more questions, and then I'll let you go. One, I would love for you to reiterate, because you did say, and I just want to you to reiterate, how these are different than other models that are that are on the market yeah i mean there's there's a couple well no there's one other one uh that's similar that's wireless app-based um that's on the market um you know we, we price ours more because the quality is better that's it. you know we, we use more quality materials yep. you know we use neoprene nobody else is uses neoprene Mm -hmm. um you know it's it's antimicrobial mm -hmm. it's comfortable it feels like a knee brace yes. it's just comfortable um, we use a custom bladder, our, bla our, bla our air bladder, <laughs> custom bladder, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> air bladder. <laughs> I love it. Uh, yeah, the air bladder that inflates. Um, that's custom. So that, that's custom for BFR. It, uh, it. it's almost like a gel. So when you wow. inflate, like a blood pressure cuff, it's nylon against mm -hmm. nylon. And when it inflates, it pinches at the corners. Mm -hmm. um, we use a type of material. So when it inflates, it's almost like a gel. Love almost. it. So when it inflates, it, it just, it goes Comfort, uniformly yeah. around the limb. There's no pinching. Love that. Um, the, the competitor does not do that. Love it. Um, and at the end of the day, ours is accurate and theirs isn't. There's actually, there's actually failed a validation test. One of our competitors. Yes. Uh, for the upper extremity, it was fine. But for lower extremity, um, it was not accurate. The authors were like, we can't recommend this, you know? And, um, and, you know, I, I'm, not, I'm not going to mention. Yeah, I'm not going to mention the totally. company. It's out there, totally. you know, but you know, it's it just, it just goes, you know, we just, we, we're really, we're confident behind our product, yes. you know, and we work hard to make sure it does what it says it does. Yes. Um, yeah. So this, it's this right here. Oh so, yeah. Folks, this is why I brought Nick on. This is why I was looking into when I was doing my research of like, who would I like to pitch and reach out to? It was because of this. And again, like I said earlier, my whole goal is to cut through the noise for you and just put the best products in front of you. So you don't have to go searching around and looking at charts and things. It's right here. Right? It's validated. Uh, they've gone through all of the rigmarole to make sure that it does what it says it does. And for the majority of my audience, I know there's a lot of PTs in here. I know we are all scared of the legal side of things. And so I brought someone in who is also concerned about that and has done the footwork to allay yeah. those concerns. So this yeah. is why, to me, it's a smart tool, smart cuffs, or nothing. If you're looking to get into BFR, this is my only recommendation. Second and last question for you, Nick, and I don't know if you can answer this, but is okay. there anything, and also like, Probably no, because you just put these out. But is there anything new coming down the pipeline? What's smart tool? Oh, doing? yeah. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. So my brain never stops like new with new products and stuff. So like I already we already filed for trademarks uh, for the other Look two products. Guy. Look at this <laughs> and guy. We filed for like, yeah, like okay. a year ago. So, okay, so we got some yeah. new stuff coming. Yeah, some new stuff coming. Okay. Yeah. Um, not BFR related whatsoever, um, but it is for rehab. Okay. Um, it is for it's, it's we're just constantly trying to this. fill needs. Uh, for for rehab and and patients too, you know, patients don't have the equipment for home use. They just nailed don't. it. And and there's only so much you can do with a theraband. Man, nail, oh my uh, goodness. You know, uh, so we're, we're really yeah. Okay. And and you know, strength training and is my you know is my really my background and okay. passion. You know, I really got into it in college, and you know, I played baseball. Um, you know, through throughout high school up until I was 19, so I, I was an athlete for mm -hmm. a while. And 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 you know, strength training and and bodybuilding all that totally. fun stuff really kind of really you know resonate with me and uh the discipline that it needed to, to, to you know to do all that so i i always wanted to make products for like strength and love it you know, and to throw out the rehab side so yeah yeah i definitely okay. um Keep i'm hoping eye. to have the next product and it's big it okay is, it's a, it's a big yeah it's big um it's gonna be a huge project i love this uh, yeah um probably in the next 16 to 18 months cool so you folks heard it here. Keep an eye on the uh, 
the Instagrams, keep an eye out. And yes. uh, there's something new coming down the pipeline. Like I said, we will drop uh, the contact information, not contact, we'll drop the website and Instagram um, in the show notes. Last thing, Nick, you had said before, there is a discount code that if people want to go and get that good, good, they can use. What is that? Yes. Yep. It's just uh, very simple. Smart 10. Done. One zero. That's it. Smart one zero. That's, Amazing. That's, that takes 10% off any of the, um, any of the smart cuffs 4.0 models. Beautiful. We will drop that as well. And then my final question, Nick, I ask everyone that comes on. Okay. You left us with so much. You're giving us all this stuff, giving us all the information. My, I, I feel like I've achieved my goal. The reason I wanted you to come on here, let the people hear about you, hear from you. Is yeah. there anything else that you'd like to leave the people with? Not really. I do <laughs> not, not really. Like we're just, you know, we're not a big corporation and you know, we're a family run company. Um, y- you know, sometimes my fiance even helped oh, assemble. Goodness. Like we're not oh, this goodness. huge company that's, you know, is, you know, I, I don't have 300 employees. <laughs> I don't have a marketing team. I don't have an advertising team. Um, I do outsource it, you know, yeah. or not outsource it rather, but I have um, like uh, independent contractors, mm-hmm, right? Mm-hmm. So, um, but they meet with me. <laughs> so like, I'm the one telling yeah. them what to do and they kind of just, you know, they do it. Totally. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, you, I learned early on, there's just one thing I, it needs to be said. I learned very on, if you want things done right, sometimes you just got to do it yourself. Nick, you're speaking yeah. my language. It's just, it's just that simple. You're speaking my language. It's you're literally I mean, speaking my language. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, love I mean, just from a product side of things, like if you want something done right, you, and not like I'm an engineer, yeah. but like if you want something done right, you really have to tell them exactly what you want. You because nobody knows your product, yes. your customers better than, than you. you. He's in it, folks. You hear yeah. this? You hear? I know that that statement right there resonated with you in terms of if you want the outcome that you want, oftentimes it's got to be you, you in the mm-hmm. trenches, you doing the thing, you dictating that you, you know really getting your hands dirty and staying with it. And I love that, Nick. That makes me happy. It's not uh, some guy that's like, you know, living in, I don't know, Bora Bora, just being like, oh, I'm <laughs> raking in the money here. Like, I love this. He's in it. He's invested. Yeah. He is interested in it. You see the excitement. If you're watching this on YouTube, you see the excitement that Nick had when he was talking I'm like, oh, there's a new product coming. I'm like, this man's excited. Nothing gets me <laughs> jacked up the new product. I swear <laughs> to God. This man is excited. <laughs> Nick, this has been yeah. phenomenal. I am so appreciative of your time. I'm so appreciative you sent Absolutely. the unit over. Just this is phenomenal. And like I said, my whole goal was just to get you in front of my people and put the best in front of the best. So thank you for all that you do. Thank you for being so willing to, uh, I don't know, do the thing. I'm like, this guy's like, uh, I'm going to make a company now. I'm going to make uh, some tools. I'm going to make a uh, smart cups. I love it. Thank you for being so yeah. willing to do this and help the people and bring these products to people. And uh, yeah, this was great. I really, really appreciate you. Awesome. I appreciate you having me on. Now. This is great. So it's it's always good when I can talk about my company. Yeah, so. I love it. You folks listening, thank you. I know you could have been doing anything and you chose to listen to us. And for that, we are both endlessly, endlessly, endlessly appreciative. No specific ask or anything like that today. Remember, we got to give. If you want to get yourself a pair of that good good, a pair of those smart cuffs, use the code SMART10, save yourself some monies. We will drop all the things in the show notes. If you want to help us out, do me a solid then and share this episode with somebody who you think it could help. All right, that's all I got for you. Until next time, friends, Nicolosi and Maestro out. <laughs>